Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. In today's Space News update, we are talking about the SN10's possible static fire coming up today. We're going to talk about the landing pad at the Boca Chica area for SpaceX. We're also going to be talking about Starlink's possible IPO, Elon Musk had tweeted out, as well as a contract NASA gave to SpaceX and the recent Mars mission China conducted. If you want to know everything, be sure to stick to the whole episode. Also, I just want to remind you, if you like this content, if you want more of it, be sure to click the like button. It helps me out a ton lets me know you guys want more of this content. Let's get things started. Right here, the picture you're looking at is the landing pad at the SpaceX launch facility down in the Texas area. It had to be repaired after, as we all know, the SN9, it didn't quite stick the landing. It had a little oopsie. The landing pad had to be repaired. Because of that, for obvious reasons, I wouldn't expect a launch to happen this weekend at all. Even if they do the stacked fire today, don't expect any sort of landing coming up or launch this weekend. If you know anything about construction and concrete, concrete takes time. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if the FAA approves your concrete. <laughs> the, the concrete takes time to settle. One day is not going to be sufficient. We're going into Saturday and Sunday by the time this would even be fully hardened. You know what I mean? It's not. It's just not reasonable to think that they're going to try to land this with a pile of wet concrete. And this photo is from yesterday. They're still working on the pad. So my earliest prediction would be after the weekend, sometime Monday or Tuesday at the earliest for a launch. Let's talk about the static fire. So locals in the area got a road closure for today, February 11th, that SpaceX could be doing a static fire anywhere from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. As I mentioned plenty of times before, these road closures signal that there will be testing going on in the area. Although it doesn't specifically say what kind of testing, a road closure means either a cryo test or a static fire test. If it was an actual launch, the residents would have to leave their house so they don't get blown up in case of an emergency. By the time you watch this video, or by the time it airs, I should say, it will be about 10 o'clock in the local Texas area. So they'll still have a few more hours to go until we see actually any activity on the launch area itself. There could still be crew working in that area. So we'll wait a little bit and they have a large window from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. So it could be later in the evening that we see a static fire. There's gonna be multiple channels. I'm sure live streaming it, I'm personally not. But check out the other channels if you do wanna see the static fire conduct. It's only like a few second activity. There'll be plenty of replays tomorrow of it if it does happen. I don't want to speculate too much on the static fire because like any other time, the only information we have regarding this is road closures and if it actually happens, which we find out after it happens. So I don't want to speculate too much on that. There's really not much news to tell about it. Something we can talk about though, Elon Musk, he has responded regarding a Starlink IPO. So even though SpaceX and Starlink operate together, the Starlink is ultimately going to be its own separate entity in a business sense. It's it's a weird uh, legal thing. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a you know business lawyer. That's not something I'm going to make remarks on because I will probably be wrong. Ultimately, though, Starlink will be able to do an IPO onto the stock market without having to affect SpaceX's uh, testing and the Starships, things like that. Elon Musk have responded saying that Starlink will IPO once they get a cash flow prediction in place. Right now, they're still doing pre-orders, a, a massive amount of pre-orders actually. They're trying to get more countries legal to do Starlink to provide service in those areas. Satellite missions like this are an expensive endeavor. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money to get those satellites in the orbit to provide the service. And he even said in the tweets that the more that they get in orbit and the more customers they have, the more cost effective it'll be for the end consumer. It'll get cheaper and cheaper. As of right now, the price of it is $500 for the startup kit to get the satellite and your, your little router, all that. And then it's $99 a month. If we can cut it down lower than $99 a month, that would be really affordable. I want Starlink to succeed for multiple reasons. And a lot of other internet service providers are trying to poo-poo Starlink saying that it's not a good service. Here's my take on this. And let me know in the comments what you think about this. I want Starlink to succeed. One, it's going to fund Starship. It's going to fund missions to Mars and the moon. Who doesn't want that? That's cool. It's interesting. It's like, hey, you know what? I get, not only do I get internet service, but I also... In the back of my mind, I know I'm funding people going to Mars. I'm funding the future, right? 
The second reason I want them is I hate Comcast. Comcast is currently my internet service provider, and they suck. Anybody who has Comcast, I don't think you can really stand up for them, can you? They suck. They don't do anything valuable. There's Verizon. There's like Dis. There's a few others. I don't have FiOS in my area. A lot of people don't. The great thing about SpaceX or Starlink, I'm sorry, you can go in the middle of nowhere. There can be absolutely no no service whatsoever, and you can still connect to the internet with these little dishes they have. They're mobile. They're portable. I can't do that with like a landline style um, internet service provider. I can't do that with what I currently have. Starlink is going to change that. Also, other internet service providers are trying to say that the service itself will be very slow. Now, starting off, it's probably going to be slow. There's not much satellites in orbit. But if if I'm an actual competitor of Starlink, for example, I wouldn't I wouldn't be saying that. I would just say, okay, they're going to have a bad uh, product. Sure, let them launch all the satellites into orbit, waste all their money, and when people use their service and don't like it, they'll still come to us. They know that this is going to be much better than them. It's going to be more affordable than them. It's going to put them out of business. Most likely, as soon as I cannot have to deal with Comcast, I will not deal with Comcast. It's as simple as that, and most people agree. Either way, that, that's my rant on the Starlink, and I want to see an IPO. I think they'll do really well in terms of the stock market. It seems like a really cash flow predictive business. Like you were saying, the whole expensive part is actually getting it into uh, established and getting a good customer base. Once you do that, you have satellites in orbit. People pay for the service. SpaceX, uh, the Starlink program, it cash flows. It's as simple as that. That's all I want to talk about regarding that. Let me know in the comments what you think about my opinions. If you have any disagreements, I love to hear the arguments. Next thing I want to talk about. NASA has selected SpaceX, of course, to launch components, the power and propulsion element, as well as the habitation and logistics outpost for their Gateway program. The Gateway program, if you're not familiar with that, it's going to be essentially a mini uh, space station that will be revolving around the moon. The purpose of this is that, so when we go back to the moon for the Artemis program NASA is also going to be doing, they have sort of like a middleman area that astronauts can go to and it'll be a more long-term place they can't stay on the moon very long for the fact that there's no oxygen there they can only bring so much oxygen and other resources on there with this with this gateway it works as the space station so they can go back and forth between that and the moon it'll be much more cost effective it'll be much safer and in terms of the time think about it we don't have to launch a rocket multiple times to get somebody to the moon we launch them to the gateway, they stay there, and they can bounce between the moon and back to the space station. And there you go. It's as simple as that. SpaceX will be launching this in May of 2024 to the fine tune of $331 million that NASA has to pay out for multiple reasons to the mission. Last story I have for you guys. Yesterday, China successfully got their orbiter into orbit. Now, this has a rover attached to it that's going to be deploying onto the Mars surface in the next few months. According to the article from APNews.com, the rover is a solar-powered vehicle about the size of a golf cart, and it's going to collect data on underground water and look for evidence that the planet may have once harbored microscopic life. It's going to be landing in the same area that one of the United States Viking missions landed back in the 70s. It's looking to see what, in terms of the not the atmosphere itself, but the soil itself, the ground itself. Did this possibly once harbor life? What can we find here? It's going to study the soil. How can we, as I've stated before, how can we terraform this type of soil, right? What can we do with it? Things like that. It also comes after the day before that when the United Arab, United Arab Emirates <laughs> successfully got a, a satellite in the orbit of Mars. That's all I have for you guys on today's episode. If you want more of this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment. What do you think about this episode? And be sure to like it on your way out. Have a good one.